You can come closer. I know you're there. <laughs> you can come even closer. I won't bite. There we go. I have to say, you seem rather dumbstruck. Is it your first time seeing a kitsune? I can't blame you. Even those used to supernatural creatures like myself are usually astonished at the number of my tales. It's pretty flattering. You can stare at them if you like. I'm used to it by now. Oh, so I am the first kitsune you've seen. That's strange. I could have sworn you seemed familiar. But oh well. I'm honored to be your first to meet. So, what brings you to this neck of the woods? I don't see many humans around here. Not this deep, anyway. Oh, an apprentice mage, are we? Well, that's rather impressive. By human standards, anyway. I think. It's been a while. So let me guess, you're trying to make a contract with a familiar, right? I mean, I can't imagine why else you'd come here. Unless you really wanted to meet a supernatural creature just because. That's what I thought. So let me guess, you were searching for a kitsune in particular to be your familiar, right? No werewolf or lamia or whatnot would do? <laughs> How did I know? It's written all over your face. And I don't just mean the grin on your face. I can tell from your aura. You see, everyone's aura is a unique identifier. Much like a fingerprint. And you have the exact same aura as my old master. Back when they were still alive. They were a bit obsessed with having a kitsune familiar. Which means you are, too. Yes, that's right. You're basically the same person as my old master. Basically, you're their reincarnation. I don't have a single doubt about that. Your aura is an exact match. Oh, it's been so long. I was so worried it was just the nostalgia, but your aura is just like I remember it. It's so sweet with the consistency of syrup to match. Though it feels fresh like mist on my skin, and the fragrance is fruity, but not overpowering. If only you were a bit more skilled at magic, you would be able to experience it too. But oh well, you'll learn in time. It took me a while myself back then to learn how to detect your aura so thoroughly. Months of training alongside you under your contract. But it was so worth it. When I could finally experience our bond on an entirely new level. I can tell you might be a bit skeptical. You meet a kitsune in the forest, and suddenly they claim to be your familiar from a past life. There are a few things sketchier, but I can prove it. Prove that I really am yours. Your looks might have changed, but your body language is still the exact same. I'm sure so much more must have carried over as well. I know. We can do a little test. I'll show you that I have knowledge that could only have come from knowing you from a past life. I know things about you that even you don't know. For instance, look over there. See those bushes? See their berries. One type is blue, one type is red, and one type is black. Do you know what they're called? <laughs> really? You don't? That's ironic. You always used to poke fun at me for forgetting their names. It was a bit of a running gag between us. But I'm rather excited to get to be the one to teach you this time. 
Here, if you want to try the blue one, you'll find it's your favorite fruit in the world. Which is a bit strange, since it's such an unpopular berry. But that just makes your taste more refined, in my opinion. I developed a taste for it myself, just so I could be more like you. If you try the red berry, you'll find it's okay. Probably. You always said the taste for that one was so inconsistent. On some days, it could be almost as good as the blue ones. Maybe try a few batches to see if you get the good batch. Lastly, there's the black ones. I don't think you'll want to try it more than once. You always said it was your least favorite. And you had no idea how people ate them. Whenever you wanted to describe a food as disgusting, you'd say it tasted like the blackberry. Well, all right. Let me pick a few for you. Okay, here we go. Give them a bite and let me know just how right I am. See? I could tell I was right just from your facial expressions. And also, you spat out the black one. <laughs> I'll have to pick more of the blue ones for you, though. You really went to town on them. But do you believe me now? I mean, what are the chances I'd get all three right? Not to mention knowing your Kitsune obsession. Oh dear, you poor thing. You're giving me that look you always do when you're starved of touching my tails. I know that... From your perspective, maybe you just met me. But from mine, there's no one closer to me. So here, go ahead. I'd be comfortable with you touching them. I'd like that, actually. Fluff them all you want. <laughs> oh, it's been so long since I got to see that glorious expression of yours. You always drooled like a baby when you touched my tails. Don't worry, though. I'm not making fun of you. It's not something to be embarrassed about. I'm just glad you have something you're happy with. Especially when that something is me. Well, my tails, rather. But you get the idea. I always missed moments like these. Every night, when we would fall asleep, our cuddling would always be focused around my tails. Whenever you hugged me, or used them as a pillow, I used to joke that they were your tails, with how obsessed you were with them, and how much comfort they gave you. Especially on your deathbed. Your final moments were with my tails. I really missed you, you know. All these years without you, it's been so long. Humans don't live nearly as long as a kitsune does. I already knew that. But I was always in denial. Even when your skin grew wrinkly and your hair grew gray, I was still always in denial. I'd tell myself you always have a few more years with me at the very least. Then, as reality hit me, the rationalization changed to a few more months, and a few more weeks, and a few more days, until finally, I lied to myself saying you surely have at least a few more minutes with me. Then you passed away right in front of me. You're finally here in front of me, and I still don't think I can come to terms with what happened. I've always loved you. Too much for my own good master. Can I call you that? I can call you that, can't I? Master? I always loved calling you master. It reinforces our bond, our contract, our connection. Say, I want to feel that connection again. I know I might be rushing into things a bit here, but can we? Can we make a contract again? Right here, right now. I don't want to suffer a single second more of the distance from you. We've been separated for so long, we have so much to make up for. So we should start as soon as possible. 
That's great. Oh, Master, I can just get drunk on your words. You always knew how to please me. We'll finally be together, just the two of us. What? What do you mean it's not going to be just the two of us? What do you mean you want to get another familiar other than just me? Aren't I enough? I'm super powerful from all the training in your past life. My flames are hot enough to melt through steel. My illusions are real enough to touch. I'm the top percentile of familiars. And in time, I'll get even stronger. If there's something that's not enough about me, I can change it. Is my looks. By now, I can maintain my illusions indefinitely. I've always been practicing with illusions of you, after all. So, I can look however you like. No? You always said I was the only one you needed. Every day you'd assure me. <sighs> Forget it. What's done is done. It looks like I can't change your mind. So let's hurry up and perform the contract. You do have the magic inks, right? The silver and gold ones? To sign the contract. And the contract itself? Excellent. It looks like your tuition wasn't a waste. Here, give me the gold one. What? No, no, no. The familiar uses the gold ink to sign. The master uses the silver ink. Well, then your teachers were wrong then. Listen, the familiar uses the more expensive ink as a show of respect towards the familiar. What kind of familiar would form a contract with a master that doesn't respect them, after all? You're still unsure? What about the purifying properties of silver? It's symbolic of the purity of the master's intentions, assuring that the familiar can trust itself to be under their new master. That's why the master uses the silver ink. No. I'm sorry, but that's wrong. The mnemonic device goes like this. The master uses the silver ink to form the link, while the familiar uses the golden ink, most expensive of all, to show they are treasured as a doll. Okay, I don't know how to put this politely, so I'm just going to say it. Which one of us has lived longer? Which one of us has more experience? Which one of us has actually performed a familiar contract? Thank you. Here I go. I have a pretty signature, I know. Now, you sign with the silver ink, and... There. Yes, you're right. That is indeed the familiar insignia that appeared on your body, and the master insignia appeared on mine. I'm so very sorry to have to trick you like this, but... You didn't really leave me much choice. It's not really your fault. You're so young. Why, you're practically just started your current life. You're still just an apprentice mage. There's so much you don't know. You're bound to make mistakes. But it's my duty as your senior to set them straight. I can't just let you ruin your life just because you're going through a phase. Now can I? I'm not going to let you be miserable because your fairy familiar pulled the fifth prank on you this week, or because your Neko is once again being an insufferable little... Well, you know how they are. But I can't let you suffer like that, Master. Well, I guess I'm the Master now. And now that I'm the Master, you won't be able to make a contract with anyone else. And not to mention, you'll be under my authority. I'll try not to abuse that. Aw, oh, poor thing. 
You look like you're still in shock. Is this all hard to process? It's okay. You don't have to think about it too hard. You really don't have to do anything. Now that we're together and connected once again, I'll be taking care of everything. I still have a lot of wealth that we saved up from your last life. I can treat you. Spoil you, even. I'll buy you all those blueberries that you like. You won't have to work. You can just stay inside and fluff my tails. It'll be paradise. And not just for you, but for me, too. Because, although a kitsune lives for such a long time, that extreme lifespan can be a curse as well. If it's not alongside the right person... But you're the right person. Even fate agrees. They brought you to me. And so, we can finally live happily ever after. Well, until you die anyway. Then I can find you in your next life. And then when you die as well, I could just have to find you again, and so on. I'll never let death keep us apart. I'll never let anything keep us apart again. We'll be together. Forever.